Welcome everyone to this amazing battle between two young talents. One from India, other from Uzbekistan. Nodir Bek Abdu Sataro opens the game with 1c4. This is the final round of the Qatar Masters 2023. And you can see there Arjun thinking a bit, which means that his first move of his opponent has caught him a bit by surprise. Arjun already has half a point lead over the field which means that if he manages to draw this, he would be guaranteed a joint spot at the top. And if he wins, he would be the clear champion. Nodirbek, on the other hand, if he wins, also would have a fixed joint first spot in the tournament. Well, Arjun goes for d5 and Nodirbek now plays d4, transposing it into a normal queen's gambit opening. But Arjun plays the triangle system. Now, this is a slightly weird opening because instead of developing a piece, you are putting a pawn. But black is greedy. He wants to take here and hold on to the pawn. But Nodirbek goes for the absolute sharp line. Takes here and this is going to be an epic struggle because if we go into the main line, it is a pawn sacrifice line and there are fireworks. Bishop b4 played. And now Magnus had once played knight c3, which is a sedate line against Vishy Anand. But bishop d2, yes, that is the main line. And now Arjun takes the pawn. So now your bishop is hanging. But on the other hand, your knight is hanging here. So he takes and Arjun will take the knight. And now you see that white is down a pawn. But the dark squares are tremendously weakened. So bishop e2, fantastic move. Uh, knight e2 is also possible. Knight comes to a6, asking the question to the bishop, where do you want to go? Bishop d6 played. There's also bishop a3, which is a line, and bishop a5 as well. Now, the main move, e5, used to be played, but queen takes g2 is a greedy approach. White, black is now two pods up, and the rook is also hanging. <laughs> you need to save it. How do you save it is the question. Bishop f3 played by Nodirbek and the engines do not like it so much but of course Nodirbek Abdu Satoru is very well prepared and this has been played before several times. Okay, Arjun has to save his queen. Where will the queen go? It goes to g5. That is the normal way to continue. Think about the position carefully and try to understand what is it that white has got in return for two pawns. 92. The main thing that white has is a lead in development. Look, the rook is coming in. Also, you can move the queen and long castle. And the most important of all are the dark squares are a bit weak and black does not have a dark square and white has it. So these are the compensating elements. But is it worth two pawn deficit? We will have to see. Knight g3 played by Nodirbek. He has one minute. 1 hour 31 minutes on the clock while Arjun has 1 hour 32. Clearly both of these youngsters are well prepared. Arjun pushes his pawn to e5 and already we are in a new territory where no games have been played. But this is these are the top engine moves so you can never be sure how much of it is preparation. Nodirbek puts his queen on b3. Now this queen is slowly just putting a little bit of pressure on the queen side. Short castles played here by Arjun. The queen is nicely defending the knight. So right now you can't win material. But the queen can be pushed around a bit. Nodirbek is ready to push his edge pawn. Thinks a bit and plays it. Now the queen is attacked. right? And the queen has to move. But where exactly will the queen go? Do you go to g6? No. If you go anywhere, then you lose the knight. So the only place to go is f6. So he plays it. Okay. Now the queen defends the bishop here. This bishop is hanging. So either you can bring your knight to the center or you can think about long castle. He brings his knight to the center. And once again, Arjun is walking a tight rope. He has to move his queen to e6 to keep the knight defended. He does it. How should white now continue? Because if black gets the chance, he would love to sort of push the pieces away, bring the rook into the game and so on. Ooh, long castle played. Wow. And f5 actually makes no sense because knight moves here and pawn pushes forward. Check and it would be game over. Okay. 
So Arjun can't push the pawn. The best move is rook e8. He he saves the knight so that now there's no longer trouble with the queen having to defend the knight all the time. Is Nadir back out of his prep? He's down to 1 hour 25 minutes. Could be that he's remembering his preparation. He goes rook g1 and this is a very useful move. Because at some point, this check could come in and you can no longer take with the pawn. The king is attacked. Arjun goes for the most natural move, knight f5 attacking the bishop. But now guys, the next move is simply insane. This is the move which will simply blow your mind and actually Nadir Beck is still in his prep. Bishop h5, what a move, what a move. If you now take this, then I take with the rook attacking your queen, threatening knight f6. And you can see Arjun now down to 29 minutes on the clock. He's thought for more than 30 minutes and plays knight to d4. This might not be the best move, but it's a fighting move of chess. And now Nadir Beck's ideas of knight g5 are not possible because the queen is hanging. But this is a big threat, attacking f7. So he plays queen d3 again. Look at Nadir Beck's time, 1 hour 25 minutes. What preparation? And Arjun is under so much pressure. Final round game. How is he going to come out of it? He goes g6. He attacks the bishop here. And the bishop has to move now, but actually it's not really threatened because this is pinned. But, but the point was to fight against this f7 pawn being attacked. Whoa, again the best move found by Nadir Beck. f4. He's shaking up the knight's position. So if you take here, the knight would be hanging on d4. That would be a big, big problem. Arjun plays c5 and solidifies the knight and he says, Look, I'm two pawns up. I'm okay to give up a few of my pawns. And what is now commendable from Arjun's end is the fact that even though he's been out prepared, even though he's low on time, like nearly an hour, he still keeps the fighting spirit alive. Now, knight f6 check is a massive threat to win the rook. So Arjun, with 21 minutes on the clock, goes in. This is confidence. This is the confidence of the youth. Knight is attacking the queen and the pawn. So the queen goes back, keeping in touch with this pawn so that queen takes c4 does not happen. And what does Arjun do now? He plays queen f5. Very interesting move. And he tells Nadir Beck, if you give a check, I'll move my king away. And if you take my rook, there's a mate here. So that's the reason why an exchange sack happens. What a move. Because if you take here, your knight is hanging. And so he takes with the pawn. Okay. Okay. And now, uh, okay, you, you can either give a check first. Yes, that seems right. Yes, a check to the king. And of course, taking here on e8 doesn't make sense because I would check and save my knight. And then I would pick up, you know, this 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 would be a huge attack on the king. In fact, there's a mate. Oh, there's a mate. So the knight had to be picked up. And white now has three pieces on the board. Black has only one. So two pieces for a rook is a position. And Arjun takes, rook takes e5. Okay, very, very sharp position, guys, developing here. And now this bishop is a bit loose. The knight is a bit loose. And so Nadir Beck comes back, bishop d1. Fantastic move. The bishop is very, very useful here and is, a, is an excellently placed piece. Could come here uh, later on. And also that was the only square sort of for the bishop, which was safe. And Arjun now plays bishop e6. He's developing his pieces. He has a rook and two pawns for two minor pieces. So materially he's doing well. But the black king is a little bit in the corner. And as we have said before, the dark squares are weak. And this bishop is the monster. It's attacking the rook. And Arjun now needs to be very careful. How does he continue here? It turns out he takes the pawn. Whoa! What a nice move here. Played by him. Because now, there are if bishop f1, there is queen f1 takes bishop f1 that happens but he goes knight to g4 this is not the best he should have taken here this was the best move but knight g4 allows arjun to take queen takes f1 and now bishop takes e5 first has to be played which is a, which is which comes with a check
he's thinking here no they're back he takes with a check so now he is up material king g8 played by the way if you played your pawn up to f6 here there were other issues like bishop takes f6 coming in so king g8 and now rook takes f1 to be played and he takes it and arjun must take the knight uh, take the rook yes and the material is now sort of uh, solidifying on the board white has two minor pieces for the rook still but black now has three pawns for the time being but nodirbek still has this bind and this bind is very powerful because the bishop will take this pawn the other bishop could come here king g7 you have to move in because if you go king f8 then you lose the h7 pawn so you go into this spin clearly with the understanding that there is no really good discovered attack king moves up so nodirbek playing calmly coolly here but arjun really hats off to him from a difficult position he's fought by fought back like anything and if he manages to draw he would have all the chances to win the title of the qatar masters so bishop g2 nodirbek starts to expand on the queen side with the pawn move to b4 and where does arjun go next he goes pawn to h6 and a useful move because in many lines this was hanging how does arjun now get his rook into the game is a good question to be asked but uh, nodirbek clearly would understand that his chances of winning this game are dwindling they are going down and he brings his bishop to d3 and how does black play now he goes king f8 so his plan is maybe to put the king on e7 the king will be centrally located so nodirbek now takes the pawn he couldn't have taken it earlier because earlier if he took there was rook d8 and if the king moves i can take it bishop takes and take the knight but with the king moving away now taking the pawn makes sense okay arjun is able to bring his king out in the open which is a good improvement once again materially the position is completely fine for black and i think even now positionally it's doing well he's on move 36 arjun has 3 minutes on the clock he's handled his clock well he's handled nodirbek's opening preparation well and this is what you get when two world class ambitious young players play this is modern chess in its fullest glory that you can see two fighters great opening prep fighting till the end using all the resources great tactics and so and so forth now bishop h3 i think what arjun has figured is that here um, if the knight would have taken the pawn he would have allowed to trade off one of the bishops here which then would mean that white couldn't play for win so nodirbek still fighting for the win with king f4 but now arjun plays the move g5 very interesting move because if you take take king takes then a check comes in and you lose the knight so white takes the pawn yes black takes the pawn back gives a check and now he's going to move his king back to g3 well in such a position you just take the knight yes bishop takes g4 king takes g4 and now by all means the game is going towards a draw yes you want to save this pawn with rook g8 but then slowly you may lose that pawn anyway so he goes rook d8 he he activates his rook and i believe after this is move number 41 read so arjun just takes a short break he goes there maybe to the washroom uh, abdu satarov brings his bishop back to a1 and i think it's time to activate your rook go in there Arjun takes a nice long thing. He now has used. Uh, he still has 26 minutes because after 40 moves you get half an hour. Rook moves in to d3, and now where does Nodirbek place his king? Uh, that is a question. He takes the pawn. You can see that 
Nodirbek being very careful about the way he proceeds because one check, one wrong check and the game is over. You know, that is how it is. And at stake are uh, is a title and also the first place prize money of $25,000. The second place prize money is $15,000 and the third place is $10,000. So A5 played. He takes on A5. And now Nodirbek, uh, Arjun must also recapture. So he takes back. Now you will see that the number of pawns on the board are also less. Uh, if at the right time Arjun can sack his rook for the bishop and one pawn, the game is already drawn. So many, many ways to draw. And in fact, many players would have already agreed to a draw by now. But, you know, these two fighters, they will play till the bitter end. That is how they are. Uh, made from within rook d2 played and of course there could be some mistakes like bishop c3 you don't want to go into some kind of a skewer so king comes back to f4 and now arjun goes with the pawn to a4 Nodirbek brings his bishop here and his point is if you go rook c2 then I give a check and I save my pieces there. Arjun goes to the other side. He plays his rook to h2 and now uh, the king can move up the board. Somehow, I mean the position is drawish but white is trying. Maybe if he can win this pawn, the the A pawn can try a bit and Arjun has 18 minutes on the clock. Nodirbek has 35 but the game will most likely end in a draw. And Arjun now making his 48th move. He has 17 minutes on the clock. Rook h4. Oh my goodness. What a blunder. Nodirbek doesn't even write the move. He plays it. Stares at his opponent. It's a completely missed double attack. Look at Arjun. He's just blundered a complete rook there. Unbelievable mistake. Unbelievable and he can't come to grips with what he has done. The final round of the tournament where everything was at stake. He shakes hands. Nodirbek is shaking his head. He knows that his opponent fought really hard and the draw was the right result. But he was so alert. He kept fighting. They signed the score sheets. It's an amazing amazing game that was marred by a blunder and there you see Nodirbek saying sorry to his opponent what a beautiful gesture by him and Arjun nodding his head really a big big mistake